Here I want to consider a system of equations x1 dot equals x1 plus x2 and x2 dot equals minus x1 plus x2. We can write this in matrix form so x, the dot is the time derivative so d dt of x1 x2 is uh, our 2 by 2 matrix times x1 x2 and we can read off uh, x1 plus x2 so the first row here is 1 1 and minus x1 plus x2 so minus 1 1 so this is our uh, standard uh, matrix equation x vector dot is equal to a times x vector to uh, solve this system we try a uh, form of the solution where x of t is equal to some constant vector times e to the lambda t. Uh, we substitute in and we get our eigenvalue problem. So we get uh, a times v from the right hand side equal to lambda v and the uh, characteristic equation of the eigenvalue problem is the determinant of a minus lambda i equal to zero. For a two by two case um, that becomes uh, lambda squared minus the trace of the matrix A times lambda plus the determinant of A equal to zero and in our case lambda squared the trace is two so minus two lambda and the determinant is one times one one minus minus one is a uh, two so plus two equal to zero okay so what are our eigenvalues so uh, lambda is negative b 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared 4 minus 4ac 8 over 2a so these are two of them plus or minus square root of minus 4 is uh, 2i so the 2 cancels so this is 1 plus or minus i so this is the case of complex conjugate eigenvalues. Okay, uh, so the eigenvalues uh, show up in complex conjugate pairs, and the eigenvectors also show up in complex conjugate pairs. So we need to just find one of the eigenvectors here. So we can uh, take lambda equal to one plus i, and look for the eigenvector of that. So the eigenvector equation is a minus lambda i times the eigenvector equals 0. So our a here, let me go back, is 1, 1, minus 1, 1, right? a is 1, 1, minus 1, 1. Okay, so then this equation, a minus lambda i times v, so lambda is 1 plus i, so we subtract 1 plus i from the diagonal, and we get minus i 1 minus 1 um, minus i times uh, our eigenvector, I'll call that v1, v2, equals zero, right? Um, the second equation here should just be the first equation, right? It's just multiply through by i. The second equation gets you the first. So this one just says minus i v1 plus v2 equals zero, or v2 is equal to i v1. So we get our vector v then 
if I put v1 equal to 1, then v2 is equal to i. Okay? So that's for lambda 1 plus i. <coughs> so we have uh, uh, two solutions, right? We have um, v times e to the lambda t. And we have the complex conjugate v bar times e to the lambda bar t. So these are two solutions of the differential equation. Uh, lambda is 1 plus i. v is the column vector 1i. So we can convert this to two real solutions. So this is two. Here, this is two complex solutions. And we can convert this to two real solutions using the principle of superposition. So we can add them and divide by two. So if you add two complex conjugates and divide by two, you get the real part. So one real solution will just be the real part of v e to the lambda t. And if you subtract two complex conjugates and divide by 2i, you get the imaginary part. So the second solution will be the imaginary part of v times e to the lambda t. OK? And remember, lambda is equal to 1 plus i, right, 1 plus i. And v is the column vector 1i. OK? So then, uh, what are these two real solutions? So let me call this one x1, the real part x1. So the one of the real solutions, so this is the real part of v e to the lambda t. This is going to be the real part of v, which is 1i. Times e to the lambda t. e to the lambda t is going to be an e to the t plus e to the i t, right? So we'll have a e. I, I can just put this here and give you another step. 1 plus i times t, OK? And we can factor out an e to the t, because e to the t is real. So this is e to the t times the real part of 1i times e to the i t, which we can write as cosine t plus i sine t, right? e to the i t is cosine t plus i sine t. And then um, this is a column vector. And we can pick out the real part. So this is e to the t. And then the um, first row, the real part, cosine t plus i sine t, is just cosine t. The second row, the real part, i cosine t minus sine t is just minus sine t. OK? So that one is our x1, one of our solutions. The second solution is the imaginary part. So the second solution, I'll call x2, is the imaginary part of v e to the lambda t. And we can pull that one out from here, the imaginary part now. So that's equal to e to the t. And then uh, cosine t plus i sine t, the imaginary part is sine t. And i cosine t minus sine t, the imaginary part there then is cosine t. OK? So this one was our x1, and this is our x2. So we put it together to get the full solution. 
So the general solution, x of t, equals both of them have an e to the t. And then uh, some constant. Um, we can call that uh, a times the vector cosine t minus sine t plus some other constant we can call b times the vector sine t cosine t. Okay? And that's the uh, general solution of this equation. Okay, now if we want to draw a uh, phase portrait The face portrait can be of uh, one of two types. It could be, uh, it's, it's growing away from the origin, so it could be spiraling like this, right, outward. On the other hand, this one is spiraling counterclockwise. It could also spiral clockwise, so it could look like this one. Okay, so the face portrait can be one of these two, spiraling um, counterclockwise or spiraling clockwise. Uh, there's a way to distinguish between these two. Uh, here if you draw a uh, two vectors like this, or here you draw two vectors like this, um, this inner vector here, that's our x, which we can write as x1, x2, 0. And this outer vector here is the motion of this thing. So that's our x dot, which we can write as x1 dot, x2 dot, and 0. And if you take the cross product of these two, if you look at this three-dimensional vector with a zero third component, and you cross it into x dot, this will have a value that's in the third direction, right? So this would be a zero, zero, one here. Okay, maybe you call that x3 hat. <coughs> So uh, in this one, if you use the right-hand rule, uh, L will be uh, coming out of the board. So here, L will be positive. This one, if you use the right-hand rule, L will be going into the board. Here, L will be negative. Okay. And what is L here? Uh, L is coming from the cross product is um, x1 x2 dot minus x2 x1 dot okay and we can get this from the differential equation so the differential equation tells us what x2 dot is so going back sorry all the way to the beginning x2 dot is minus x1 plus x2, minus x1 plus x2. And then we subtract x2 times x1 dot. x1 dot was x1 plus x2, x1 plus x2. And this one will have always have a definite sign. This is minus x1 squared plus x1 x2 minus x1 2 x2 minus x2 squared. So this is minus x1 squared plus x2 squared. So that this is negative. So the phase space diagram will be negative. So it's uh, this one here, L less than 0. So it should be 
uh, spiraling out of the origin in a clockwise fashion. Okay, so this is the correct phase space diagram. And we can look at a computer generated plot. Here it is. Uh, spiraling out of the origin in a clockwise fashion.